come on in. As that songwriter said, come on in the room. Come on in the room. Well, listen, uh, as we get ready for our time tonight of study, uh, let us uh, begin with a word of prayer, uh, going before the Father, uh, seeking his uh, guidance and direction, uh, seeking his insight as to what he would have us to know and hear from his word on tonight. Let us be prayerful for our loved ones, some who are who are afflicted with uh, sickness, disease, pain, and suffering. Some are grieving because of loss. So let us be let us be mindful of that. Um, I, gracious God, our Father, we thank you once again for your goodness, grace, and your abundance of mercy. How we give you praise and thanks for all that you do and all that you are, oh God. Heavenly Father, we, we just give you glory and honor, God, for life that has been well served and now are that may be with you. For those who are in you, although they are absent from the body, they are present with you. And so as we grieve, oh God, uh, remind us that we do not grieve as one without hope, um, the hope of seeing our loved one again. Now we ask and pray, Heavenly Father, that you would be uh, with Brother JC and Brother Darren as they are enduring some medical challenges, oh God. And uh, we know what the doctors have said, but we know who we serve. We serve a God that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we can ask or even imagine according to the power that lies within us. So God, we ask and pray that you just touch and bring forth healing in their body and in their being. God, we have loved ones and family members, oh God, who are just enduring other uh, uh, issues, oh God, struggles in life. And so we pray that you would just minister, God, comfort them and, and guide them and watch them along, watch over them along the way. Now, God, we ask and pray in Jesus' name that you would give us wisdom and insight as we prepare to study your word. Heavenly Father, your Bible says, your, your word says that your word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. And so we just entrust ourselves with you, God, and we entrust ourselves uh, in your word, that you would lead us and guide us in all truth, oh God, that you would direct us in all that we do. God, we honor you and we praise you for it, even right now. Bring forth illumination in our minds and our hearts transformation to our hearts and that we might be um, motivated and, and mobilized to do that which you called us to do and live in a way that honors and pleases you. We ask all in the mighty name of Jesus the Christ. Amen. Well, brothers and sisters, tonight, um, tonight our, our lesson topic is on is uh, the characteristics of a blessed person coming out of Psalms uh, chapter one, Psalm one, verses one and two. A couple of, uh, about a week or so ago now, I was on a flight um, and is uh, a flight uh, back to Houston or one of those, I'm not sure if I was coming or going, but <clears throat> I was on a flight and as customary, when I enter uh, on the plane, uh, I will often uh, greet uh, the flight attendants at the door, uh, those that are at, at the front door, uh, and in whatever position that they are on the uh, uh, along the along the aisle. This particular this particular time, and, and, I'm, and I'm referencing when I got on a plane, I, my customary thing is to say, "Good afternoon" or "Good morning," whatever whatever time of day it is. How are you doing, or something along that nature? How are you? This particular flight attendant said to me, uh, I'm blessed and highly favored. I said, amen. <clears throat> and I went to my seat and just 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 got there, sat down. And then I real and I realized and I thought about it a little bit. I'm like, um, I know from I guess a, a, a Christian's perspective of what I think she's trying to say. Because that phrase has now in in my estimation becomes somewhat cliches, cliches. We say it, um, and, and though we there may be some meaning behind it, we're just trying to get the gist of it. And so, uh, you know, I didn't have time to ask her, so why are you 
what makes you say you're blessed and highly favored? And how do you become blessed and highly favored? We just say that when people ask you, how are you doing? I'm blessed and highly favored. So it becomes this, what does it mean to be blessed? How do we know we're blessed? What are the, what's the criteria to be blessed? How does blessings work? All that is someone who does not know what it means to be blessed and highly favored. How does one get to that place? How do you how do you get that? And sometimes we have to just pause for a moment and just review and ask ourselves, just what does it mean when you say I'm blessed? I'm gonna give you a moment right quickly. When you say, when you somebody say I'm blessed, or when you say I'm blessed, what does that mean for you? Just type a quick, quick word or so. What does that mean when you say I'm blessed? What does that mean? What does that mean when you say you're blessed? I'll give you a quick moment to catch up with that. When you say you're blessed, what does that mean? What does it mean when you say you're blessed? What does that mean? Anybody want to chime in? What does it mean when you say you're blessed? Somebody said, God provides for me all of my needs. Somebody said, reunited with my God. All right. All right. All right. Somebody said, I woke up this morning in my right mind. All right. All right. All right. That's some good stuff. That's some good stuff. Somebody said, that I believe in God and he always makes a way when there is no way. Amen. 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 All right. All right. All right. We get some feedback here. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, when we say we're blessed, um, I'm blessed and highly favored. Um, I, I want to take a moment just to look again uh, together at a passage of scripture that many of us are so familiar with, perhaps, um, is nothing unusual. All right, somebody chimed in and says he, he keeps his grace. Uh, he keeps or kept by his grace and mercy, kept by his grace and mercy. All right, all right, all right. Um, Psalm chapter one, or, or, or no more, Psalm number one. Verses one and two, we're reading from the New American Standard Bible. Let's see, let's see what, what, what the psalmist teaches us on this thought. It says, it says here, um, how blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, nor stand in the path of sinners, nor sit in the seat of scoffers, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law, he meditates day and night. How blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, nor stand in the path of sinners, nor sit in the seat of scoffers, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law, he meditates day and and night. Good evening, Pastor Jackson. Good evening, Pastor uh, Henderson. So glad that you joined us for a brief moment as you prepare to go into your own lessons tonight, Bible study tonight. We hear this psalm says, it says, oh, how blessed or, or how blessed is the man 
it, that emphasis, you know, we, we translated that word how, and it could be, oh, how blessed is the man. And, and so the focus is, is that if you and I want to be blessed, here's some things, here's some characteristics of the person whom God desires to bless. Now, let me say this to us real quickly, because someone is going to say, well, Reverend, doesn't God, uh, isn't God impartial? You're right. God, God. God, God, the rain, it rains on the just and the unjust. That's true. But, but we, we talking about when someone says having the hand of God upon them, having God's blessings upon them and to say, oh, how blessed is this? But th this is what God is desiring from you and I. Here, here it is. Here it is. Here's our, here's our main, here's our, here's our main focus, our main idea. The one who is blessed of God exhibits certain characteristics. The one who is blessed of God exhibits certain characteristics. In verses 1 and 2, it, it clearly shows us the attributes or the characteristics of a person who is blessed of God, whom God rests his blessings upon. Now, verses three onward talks about the blessings. He's planted like a tree by the rivers of living water. His leaves does not wither. Whatever he does prospers. Uh, those kind of things. Uh, but here, here we have to look at before we get to uh, before we can get to verses uh, three through six. That is. Uh, when he says he would be like a tree firmly planted by the streams of water, which yields his fruit in its seasons, and it leaves us not wither, and whatever he does, he prospers. You know, before we can get to that, what we need to get to is verses one and two, and see what God expects of us, and and how He wants to bless those of us who walk in a way that honors and pleases Him. And so, and so tonight we want to, first of all, I want to look at uh, what does it mean and the meaning of being blessed. I think sometimes we get blessed twisted. Uh, we, we confine it to certain material things. We, we confine it um, um, to certain things that you can touch, some, certain tangible kind of things. Somebody said it earlier, uh, kept by his grace and mercy. That's a blessing. Woke up this morning uh, in your right mind. Oh, oh, what a blessing. To be reunited and reconciled to God through Jesus Christ. Oh, what a, what a blessing. It's not so much, it's not just, let me say this, about material things. Because, because here is the deal. Folks oftentimes limit and, 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 and confine blessings to, to tangible kind of things. They will even say that you must not be blessed of God because you don't have this. As a matter of fact, there's a, there's a, there's a, uh, there's a whole group uh, and there's a theology surrounding this material prosperity. And saying that you must not be blessed. Hey, Reverend Thibodeau, thank you for joining us, brother. Um, you must not be blessed of God. Or God must not be with you because you're going through this. If you read through the Apostle Paul's words, letters, you'll see in some of his letters, uh, especially in the book of First and Second Corinthians, um, and you'll see also in Colossians, some of the naysayers were saying, Paul must not be blessed. He must not have God's blessing upon him because he is enduring and he's going through hard times or, or watch this, or he's lacking in something material. So what they would say is this, it's a theology out there saying you can't be blessed of God and you broke and you don't have all the things, the material things of life. 
or you're impoverished or you're suffering. So you must not be blessed. No, that has nothing to do with it. Watch this. I can be, I can be uh, materially rich and still not be blessed of the Lord. Because the scripture says, the blessings of the Lord make it rich and it comes without sorrow. Some folks have stuff, material things, and they have great sorrow with it. They weren't blessed with from God with it, but the thing that they have that's material have, have so consumed them and even maybe perhaps how they got it, if it was ill-gotten and gained, that they cannot enjoy the things that they say they're blessed with. It, it is said of Howard Hughes, how Howard Hughes had great wealth, but he had no peace. Howard Hughes had lots of money, but 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 he but he but at one period in his life, y'all, Howard Hughes could not get a solid night's sleep. Story says um, that he he would he would not be able to sleep past 59 minutes, 60, 60 minutes, a whole hour. He he sleep and he and he had to wake up, whatever the reason. So he had material things. But what he did not have was peace. That's a blessing. And yet then again, I see folks who have lack, but they can sleep. That's a blessing. That's a blessing. And so, and so let's look real quickly when he says, when he says, oh, how blessed or how blessed is. Let's look real briefly at, at what it means to be, to be, to be blessed. What it means to be blessed is is this watch this it means to be in a right relationship with god and experiencing and experiencing the joy and spiritual peace that comes from such a relationship it means to be in a right relationship with god and experiencing the joy and spiritual peace that comes with such a relationship. I think it was Sister Bird, uh, Annette Moore, who said it uh, a little earlier about, she said something about one of the things about being blessed is, is being reunited with my God. That's that right relationship that you and I have with God. There's something about having a right relationship with God and watch this, and experiencing the joy and spiritual peace that comes with such a relationship. That's what it means to be blessed. So when I say I'm blessed and highly favored, that's because I have a right relationship that I am right with God because and through Jesus Christ, between the, the, the shed blood of Christ and what Christ has done at Calvary on my behalf, that makes my relationship right with him. Okay, and so and so here I am enjoying the blessings of God, okay, because of what Christ has done on the cross, how he reconciled me, how he reconciled the world unto unto God. And so that's a blessing in which we you and I have and to hold on to. And as certain as a certain uh joy and and um and peace that comes with having that such blessing. And so, and so, and so, and so that's, that's one aspect of being, of being blessed. Then, then, and then, the, and then another aspect uh, of being blessed is simply this. It means, <clears throat> excuse me, it also means enjoying the prosperity that's material, physical, and spiritual, material, physical, and spiritual, uh, that is provided by God is enjoying the prosperity that is provided by God is material, physical, and spiritual. It's not just one or the other, but it's all encompassing because when I have the material blessings of God, okay, when I have the material blessings of God, um, it is because of Him. Or let me let me rephrase it this way: when we have the when we have the prosperity 
of material things. It comes from God. In my physical body, having prosperity in my body, healing and health, that is provided by God. My spiritual relationship, my being able to discern how blessed that is. Watch this. When God gives you discernment about a situation, uh, 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 about something that's coming along the way or somebody trying to trying to sneak in and, and deceive you, uh, and God gives you uh, a, 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 a discerning spirit, uh, something to, to sense that you are in danger or you shouldn't be um, uh, engaged in certain things, that's a blessing because everybody doesn't get the warning. Or even if they, even if the warning was given, there's no connection with the Lord and the Spirit, and the Holy Spirit, so they can't catch it. But that's a blessing. So, so let us not limit prosperity to material, physical, or or, or in physical, but to it's material blessings. It's physical in my physical being, blessing. It's, it's, it's spiritual. And all of these things are provided by God. So if you read the text again, it would say something like this. <clears throat> oh, how blessed. That is, oh, how, how blessed is that the one that is in a right relationship with God, experiencing the joy and spiritual peace that comes from such a relationship. And that's what the psalmist, that's what David discovered. And says, I'm blessed because of, because I am with God. And I have this relationship with my heavenly father. Okay. All right. All right. So we click in the gun. That, that makes sense. If that makes sense, now hit the like sign so I can know we I know we we there. If I'm making if that making any sense, just hit hit the like sign and say, yeah, Reverend, it, it I'm clicking. Okay, okay, cool. I saw a like sign or two. Okay, cool, 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 cool. Watch it. So, so so the meaning of being blessed is that is that it means to be in the right relationship with God and experiencing the joy and spiritual peace that comes from such a relationship, okay? Enjoying the prosperity that is the material, physical, and um, spiritual uh, prosperity that is provided by God. Now, here, here are the characteristics. There, there, are, there, are five, there are five characteristics that, that the psalmist shows us, that the scripture gives us, to show us what, what it is and what the characteristics of a blessed person is. Three of them <clears throat> are in which, what, what, what you would phrase as in a negative or kind of a, a, a prohibition, but, but it's a negative, and two are positives, okay? Three are negatives and two are positives. Watch what he says. He says, blessed is the man I'm gonna put the first one couple of He says, Blessed is the man um, that walking not in the counsel of the wicked. The first thing about what bless, the first thing that blessed people do, that is, those who are in a right relationship with God, experiencing the joy and spiritual peace that comes from that relationship, is that they do not live in the counsel of and advice of the wicked. Now, when I, when I, let me, let me, let me clarify something real quickly. When we say uh, wicked, wicked means a person who is, and I'll use this phrase, hell bent on violating the laws and standards of God. Those that are wicked, when the Bible talks about wickedness, it talks about those who are just hell bent. They are um, determined that whatever God says, they're going to do the opposite. They're they're hell bent on violating the laws and standards of God. Watch this: the wicked have no regard for God and His authority. They do not revere God. The Bible says the fool says in his heart there is no God. That's, a, that's wickedness. That's, that's a part of the, the foolish act wickedly. Foolishness is bound in the heart of a child. Goes on and on and on. But the wicked, 
okay? They, they have no desire to live for God. And here's what, and here's what, the, here's what the scripture says. The psalmist is teaching us, the Bible is teaching us that those of us who desire to be blessed of God, and one of the characteristics is that we do not live by the counsel and advice of the wicked. Now, when he says, who does not walk, that word walk, again, when you look at that word walk in the Old Testament and in the New Testament, it really, what it means is, it means to live. So whenever you see that word walk, especially like, like in Ephesians chapter uh, 4, 5, whatever, Ephesians, it talks about walking circumspectly or walking in a circle. That means your lifestyle. That means how you live. Watch this. Those who want to be blessed of God do not find themselves always consulting and um, living with and by the advice of the wicked. Why? Because the wicked is going to give us advice that will be contrary to the will and the way of God. So why would I seek counsel? Why would I seek how to live a godly life from a person who has, first of all, not only no relationship with the Lord, but is hell-bent on not serving God? and even does not revere God, okay? Now watch this. Someone's gonna say, yeah, pastor, but hold on. They do have some good stuff from time to time. Well, I'm gonna say something that I've been saying for years. I heard it said, I pick it up my own. A broke clock is right twice a day. A broke clock is right twice a day. Now, someone who is wicked, that is, they don't revere God, they're hell bent, on um on on violating the laws and the standards of God, they may tell me, uh, Ira, it's raining outside. Okay, I take that word, but I don't live, that's not something I live by. Okay, they just tell me, hey, it's raining outside. They might even teach me, okay, some things about the natural laws. They may teach me about the laws of physics and the laws of mathematics and the laws of so. Th those are truths. Okay, cool. There's gravity, you know, so forth and so on. I got that. But I don't go to them seeking how to live in a way that would please the Lord because they cannot tell me that. So, <laughs> so let me help us. If I go to the witch doctor who does not trust God, but trusting themselves, I'm I'm walking in the counsel of the ungodly or in the counsel of the wicked. If I'm consulting the Ouija board for what to do, that's living by the counsel and advice of, 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 of demonic influences, okay? And wicked influences. And 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 those of us who are blessed do not live by that counsel. And advice. I can't tell you how many people <laughs> I've heard who can't wait to read their horoscope for the day. What? We'll read the horoscope before we read the scripture. We depend upon the horoscope more than we depend upon the scripture. Okay? So they do not live by the counsel and the advice of the wicked. Here's his his. his Next part of the verse says, they do not, that does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, nor stand in the path of sinners. They do not live their lives like those who habitually miss the mark. That is, stand in the path of sinners. Sin, sin, a way of saying sin, or someone has sinned, is that they've missed the mark. And some folks, some folks don't even try to hit the mark, okay? So, so when he says sinners in this context, is a person, watch this, who knows right from wrong, but does not exert an effort to do what is right and avoid what is wrong. 
okay? A sinner in this context is a person who knows right from wrong, but does not exert an effort to do what is right and or to avoid what is wrong. If given an opportunity to advance, they would choose wrong before right. Here's what it is, watch this. If they know that they can get a promotion, if they lie, they will lie to get the promotion. If they know that if they stole something, they would steal in order to get a promotion or to, or to move forward, or uh, they would be deceptive, okay? They live habitually by missing the mark. They see the mark, they know it's wrong, but they're going to do it anyway. He says, they do not stand in the way of sinners. They do not hang around those who are going to constantly seeking to miss the mark. They know it's wrong and they're going to do it anyway. Why not? Because association brings upon assimilation. If you're around that long enough, you find yourself finding yourself more and more comfortable and okay with missing the mark. So, so one is they don't live by the counsel and advice of the wicked, nor do they live their lives like those who habitually miss the mark. This is what, this is what the New Testament writer says. Paul said it this way, for there is no temptation that is not, that is not, uncommon to man for the Lord delivers us out of them all for he gives us a way of escape okay so we all are tempted but God always gives us a way of escape to come out of it those who are blessed seek that way those who are sinners who desire to habitually miss the mark will see a way out and still will not take it. They will see a way out and they still will not take it. They will not do or exert any effort to do what's right and to avoid what's wrong. Again, given an opportunity to advance, they will choose wrong before they would choose right. That making sense to anybody so far? That making sense? If that's making sense, say amen. Just hit amen. Let me know that's making sense. Just just click in amen. That's making sense. Just type in amen real quick. All right. <clears throat> Let me see. I want to make sure I'm still on point. All right. Got a couple of like signs here. Amen. Amen. All right. All right. All right. <clears throat> now, they don't walk in the, they don't live in the council and the advice of the, of the wicked. They do not live their lives like those who habitually miss the mark. <clears throat> watch, watch this. Watch this. He says, nor sit in the seat of the scoffers. Watch this. Watch this real quick, guys. Watch this, brothers and sisters. You notice the progression here? Or maybe I call it a regression. The psalmist starts off by saying, how blessed is the man who does not walk? And he says, or stand. Now he says, or sit. He's, watch, you, you, you see that? You see that? You see that downward progression? First, I'm walking, which means I'm moving. I'm standing, which means I stand still. Then all of a sudden, I get comfortable, I sit down. So, so the blessed man does not do that. And here's the last thing he does. Not, he does not, they do not come off as boastful and arrogant. He says, they do not sit in the seat of the scoffer. The, the, the boastful man, the scoffer, the mocker, uh, is an individual who spends time um, ridiculing and talking down on people. You ever, you ever found somebody, been around somebody, and all they got to do and all they got to say about anybody, about anything, is negative. They're constantly ridiculing other people. <clears throat> they're... they're the arrogance is so, is, is detestable by God, okay? Um, 
they think they got it all going on. They all that in a bag of chips. He says, the blessed man does not sit being boastful and arrogant, saying that they have it all going on. Why not? Because they realize that 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 their best righteousness is but filthy rags before the Lord. They understand that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory. They understand that but for the grace of God go they. Um, that's that's what they do. And and so and so they they don't boast on what they have in a spiritual sense. They don't boast what they have or achieve in a in a um in a material sense. That they, they, they're not arrogant and 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 and, and flaunting their knowledge. Why is this? The scripture says that that knowledge puff it up. You know, in other words, folk who know a lot always got something to say. And I've come to the point now, sometimes I can show you more of what I know by not saying anything. I don't always have to correct you. If you say a word that's wrong, I ain't gotta be so arrogant as though I have a, a grip on the English language that's better or better than anybody else. Or if, or if something is going on, like, oh, no, I'd never do that. Oh, I don't do that. Yeah, but you do something. We do something. But they do not, they, they do not come, off as, come off as boastful and arrogant. And, and, and that's what the blessed, watch this, because blessed folks, blessed of God, know that the only reason they are blessed, the only reason they have what they have, be it knowledge, be it material things, be it spiritual blessings, why is because of that? So when we boast, we boast in the Lord. We don't boast in the flesh. We don't boast about ourselves. That's what he says about those who are scoffers. They they literally just sit around all day, okay, um, talking about and ridiculing people. Y'all be mindful. Be mindful. Of folks, hear me now. Hear me now. Be mindful of folks who are who are always um, ridiculing and deriding others in front of you, because you know, as soon as <laughs> as soon as they get in front of somebody else, and you're not there. Your name becomes a part of the conversation. So these these first three here is is these prohibitions, these negatives. What they do not do, they do not live by the counsel and advice of the wicked. They do not live their lives like those who habitually miss the mark. And again, remember now, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. You know, you and I are going to fall short. You and I are going to miss the mark from time to time. That's what God's grace is for. That's what forgiveness is for. But there's a difference between habitually missing the mark and trying not to miss it. And then, why is this? Trying not to not miss it. I know that's a double negative, but you catch it. Habitually miss it. And then they do not come off as boastful and arrogant. Um, like they're all that in a bag of, a bag of chips. Then the psalmist gives us two more. Here we go. He says, watch this. This is what they do, though. Verse 2, he says, But the blessed man, his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law, he meditates day and night. For those of us who seek to be blessed of God, and what we do is, is that we take pleasure in the commands of God. When he says, and his delight is in the law of the Lord. It means that we see God's word as a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. We see it as God communicating to us. We see it as God speaking to us 
and God enlightening us about himself. We do not see it as the Bible as a hindrance to having fun in life, but as a guide, a guide, excuse me, for our lives. Some folks don't want to read the, the thou shall not, the do not, so because they don't want they don't want their fun taken away from them. And that's what the biggest issue is, because, because we're hedonistic. It's about pleasure. It's about, it's about our pleasure in life. And those who are hedonistic, it's always about how much fun can they have and how much pleasure can they have. And they will see God's word, God's commands as a restriction on their pleasures. So when God says to not do this or to not do this, to not be, you know, whatever they, whatever it is, or watch this, or to do, watch this, to forgive, um, to love. Watch this. We say, nah, Lord, there's, there's something wrong with that. Right now. They hate me. They're doing it against me. So I'm going to get them back, so forth and so on. But, but we find pleasure in the commands of God. We look to God's word and we say, God, your word is going to help me to, to do what's right. And watch this. When they say they're delighted, when it says their delight is in the law of the Lord, it is taking pleasure or delighting in God's word is to desire it above all other things. God, what does your word say? God, what do you say to me? God, what is that you would have me to do? And I want to go to his word. I want to get a word from the Lord. I want to hear from God. I want to see what God has for me. I had someone recently ask a question to a group of people and I, and I walked up on, I walked up on the conversation uh, and the, the question was, um, the question was, uh, show me in scripture, check this out, show me in scripture, where in scripture is what they say, that's how, that's how they phrase it, where in scripture does it say that, that you shouldn't have um, sexual intercourse um, before you get married, okay, in an unmarried state? being unmarried singles, okay? And so, and then they said, now, don't use the, the part about fornication. So the group that I walked up on ended up looking at me. And they said, I said, well, he asked y'all the question. So they, they kind of scratched. I said, well, well, I'll chime in. I said, well, one of the, I said, one of the first areas is, is this. I said, you want to use, you trying to, I said, um, you are the friend you asking for, because <laughs> always I'm asking for a friend, um, trying to validate or justify what you're doing, because they're looking for an exact phrase that says, if you're single, do not do this. So they want to use God's word, they said, because it's, 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 it's affecting their pleasure. I said, when he talks about fornication, fornication means to have to have sexual intercourse in an unmarried state. That's what fornication. Adultery is you having sexual uh, intercourse with someone that's not your spouse. That's it. I said, so the scripture is, the scripture is plain. Now, you may not want to hear it. You may not want to receive it, but that's the reality of it. Okay? But they see it as this burden, as this as these laws, as these as these as these restrictions upon their pleasures, and what we ought to do is, the blessed man, they look at God's law. Watch this, and say, "You know what, God, your word is what's best for me." Now, it's going to always come against my flesh. It will. It's going to always attack my flesh. It's going to always seek to. Um, to crucify my mouth. That's what, that's what it does. Okay. But we take pleasure in his commands. Because it's funny, isn't it? Isn't it funny how the things, the promises of God, we like when we read them. But the prohibitions of God, 
we don't like. We take pleasure in the promises. And when somebody tells you you'll get a car, Cadillac, cash, cash, car, crib, you good. But when he says thou shalt not, or you should not, or you should love, or you should give, or you should tithe, or you should, then all oh, we got a problem with the word of God. But the scripture says that bless the blessed man, the blessed person, takes pleasure in the commands of God. They look at God's word not as a damper or hindrance on pleasure and having fun in life, but as a guide for their lives. Here's the last thing. He says, and on his word do they meditate day and night. That 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 word meditate, um, it comes from uh, the image of this is that uh, of a cow chewing on cud. Here's what occurred. This is what happens. Watch this. When, when cows eat, they graze, when they graze. So they go out in the morning and they will, and they will, they will just pull grass up, pull grass up, and then, then throw it with their tongue, push it back, and it and it goes into one of the four chambers, one of the four stomachs that they have. They put it up, they put it up, right, cool. And they just plop, plop, plop. And then what cows do is they go and they sit. After they've done this for however long a time they do it, they sit and they bring up, okay, out of, out of one of those stomachs, out of one of those chambers, they'll bring up what they, what they pushed back and they will chew on it. They will chew on it, on the back, on their back teeth, okay? They chew it. And what they're doing is they're chewing and getting all of the nutrients out of what was inside of that which they pushed into the first stomach, right? And, and so the good stuff goes into their system and the trash goes into another chamber of uh, a uh, stomach in which is then discarded. So when he says the blessed man meditates on the word then, watch this, he chews on, he thinks about, that's what meditation is. Meditate is to think about the principles, promises, and directives of God's word. They're always thinking about this. They're always constantly chewing on it. They 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 grab it. Watch this. So 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 check this out, y'all. So in our daily devotion time, in our time of reading our scriptures in the morning, we may read a chapter or two or a section. Watch this, and we chew on it all day long, and we ask these questions: God, what principles? That is, what truths you want us to live by? That's what principles are. Principles are truths to live by, okay? <clears throat> God, what promises are in your word? That's something to live for. So truths, truths or principles are truths to live by. Promises are is something to live for. So there I am, I'm going through some trials and some tribulations and I'm seeing the promises of God through his word, and I'm hearing that the, that the righteous is never forsaken, nor the seed begging bread. So what truth do I have? That God is a faithful God. I live by that, but watch this. That And it says, it says, weeping man do it for the night, but joy cometh in the morning. And that's the promise I'm going to hang on to, because I know I'm living for the next day. The psalmist said it this way, uh, if I would not believe, if I did not believe I'd see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living, I would surely have fainted. So I'm holding on to the promises of God. I'd never leave you nor forsake me. Uh, forsake you. Goodness and mercy shall follow me, follow you all the days of my of your life. Okay. And so here, those are promises that we think about. And so when things get hard, when situations get tough, the blessed person doesn't abandon God, doesn't doesn't forfeit their relation with God, doesn't put it on hold, doesn't, as some folks say. Put their religion down, but what they do is they 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 think on the promises. He says he says watch this over in Philippians says be anxious for nothing, but everything through prayer supplication with thanksgiving. 
make your request known, and the peace of God which surpass all understanding shall guard your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. Then he says, and think on these things, things which are true, things which are noble, things are things which are of a good report. Think on these. Those are the promises of God's word that we stand on. And we live for the promises of God because he's faithful. God is not like man that he should lie. And every word of God is yes and amen. God does not renege on his word. His word shall go forth, not return unto him void. That's a, that's a promise I can stand on. And so I'm constantly chewing on and thinking about the principles, truths to live by, the promises, something to live for, the directives, commands to live out. Okay, God, what do you want me to do with my life? Here's the directive. Here's the command that you've given me to live out. And so I'm constantly thinking about, okay, how do I live out my life? How do I live out my life for God? How do I live out my life? God, what do you want me to do? How, how do you want me to do it? That making sense to anybody? And so watch this. I'm blessed and we're blessed because God gives us his principles. He gives us his truth. We're blessed because he gives us his promises to hold on to. And then I'm blessed because I am thinking about the commands that I am called to live out. Y'all, when you say you're blessing, you're highly favored. My question is, does that mean that you're not walking in the council or living in the council of the ungodly and the wicked? Does that mean for you that, that your lives are not live like those who habitually miss the mark? Does it mean that you do not come off boastful and arrogant? Does it mean, are you saying that you take pleasure in the commands of God? Does it mean that you're always thinking about the principles, promises, and directives of the word of God? Y'all, I, I, I just want to encourage you. Um, to live out these promises, live out these characteristics, live these characteristics of God and watch God bless your life. Watch God bless your life. Watch what he does with your life because you're living a blessed life. That makes sense? You, you, guys, you guys talk to me now. You talk to me. That makes sense? Does that click with anybody? That's clicking. All right, all right. I see some, some, some connections there. Cool, 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 cool. Amen. 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 Listen, listen, guys, brothers and sisters. I want you to go out and live a blessed life. But I want you to live this and be a part of the characteristics and fulfill the characteristics of a blessed of a blessed person. Amen. Let me remind us all. Listen, I said it once before, I'm gonna say it again. We still got Sunday school going on at the hula. 10 o'clock on Sunday mornings is Sunday school for all ages. Come on out. We look forward to seeing you. It's the place to be on Sunday morning. And then you follow that up with uh, corporate worship. We come in, we come to be equipped. We come to be equipped in Sunday school to engage with God and worship him in worship. And then we are deployed to serve him in the mission field, to go out and to serve God in wherever we go. So let's be prayerful. Let's look forward to seeing you, to seeing you there. I want to give you an opportunity for those of you who have not yet uh, uh, shared your tithes and offerings. Um, you have an opportunity to do so. You can go on the website that's listed right there on the, on the, on the screen. And there you can, uh, you, you see avenues which you can give. You can use Givelify, Cash App. You can mail it in. However, um, we ask of you to give. Now, let me just be thankful unto you. Let me just express appreciation because because of your giving, because of your faithful giving and how God has blessed uh, you to give and how you walked in obedience. Because of that, uh, we're able to do um, uh, 
you know, some wonderful things uh, for the Lord. We're able to support missions and ministry. We're able to do things locally and abroad. And we thank God for that opportunity. And so it's because you give, because you support the ministry, uh, we can help to continue to do the work of God. Again, not only locally, but outside of our city limits, outside of our state, even outside of our country. So people around the world and around our community are celebrating, giving God praise and thanks because of your commitment. Uh, to support the Lord. And watch this, the work of the Lord. And God honors our our faithfulness. So uh, we give God praise and thanks. Uh, I, I just want to uh, encourage everyone again. We'll see you guys um, on, on Sunday for worship, Bible study on as well. Uh, let's continue to keep, let's join together in prayer. Would you, Father God, how blessed we are to be in relationship with you. Our blessings, uh, we are blessed because of what Jesus Christ did on the cross of Calvary. We are blessed because you gave your son to die on our behalf. And for that, God, we give you praise and thanks. Now, God, we lift up our loved ones, our family members, God, particularly those who are going through an hour of grief and bereavement right now for the loss of a loved one. We pray your guidance and your strength in their lives, your comforting hand. We also ask and pray in Jesus' name that you be with that you be the healer for Brother JC, for Brother Darren, and for many others, oh God, who are just enduring physical ailments and illnesses, oh God, and diseases. So we just entrust them into your hands, even right now. Just bless in a mighty way, God. God, watch over us and keep us, God, even as we sleep in slumber, as we as we often say in the very image of death. May we be mindful of, of what you're doing in our lives and how blessed we are, God. Help us, God, to fulfill the truths of your word, to live out a way that honors and pleases you. That we would not walk in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stand in the way of the sinner, nor sit in the seat of the mocker. But our delight will be in the law of the Lord, your, your word. And in your word, we meditate day and night. And for that, God, we give you praise and thanks. We honor you right now. Father God, we ask these and all blessings and entrust ourselves into your mighty hands. It's in my name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. God bless everybody. So glad to see you all. Thank you guys for coming out. Thank you guys for sharing. Don't forget, we'll see you uh, uh, over the weekend. Uh, be blessed. Be a blessing to someone.